No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We give you praise for who you are. There is nothing that compares to you. No one compares to you. The Bible says that you are the lifter of our heads. You are our glory. You are our sanctification. You are our righteousness. You are our peace. You are our joy. You are our answer. Ribe ko shire baralele bo riko shire baralele. Jibro robo ko shira baralele bo kore le mando robo bo usala la 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 bariko shara raba. Riba do ko ziba reke shire mando robo usa. Sambele le swash God. Ko baranande bo zo bo je baralele bo kora ko shire bo rika rando robo uzo robo robo usa la la la. Riri bo shira ba ko paranda raba ko shire ba ko poro riba radiri ko shara. Iri bro jara na de de boko parando ro boko sara le de de bora ko teri de bo Re bro zen de ko sara le 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 bo ra ba ro ko sara na 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 All the spirit will bless you We glorify you Jesus the son of God I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh, why? Son, and I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. Sing it again. Tell him, Jesus. Jesus, the Son.
telling you Tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything we turn about you is great. Tell him demons tremble.
one more time, tell him, Lord, I'm amazed. Tell him, I'm amazed. Tell him, I'm amazed. Tell him, I'm amazed. That you gave. Spirit, we thank you that we are washed. Can somebody give the Lord a mighty help of praise? Come on. No, no, you're not clapping yet. You're not clapping yet. Clap for the truth, not opinions. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say this? Father, I believe tonight that you're going to do so big in my life. Say, Father, I believe tonight that I'm going to see you more than ever before. If you're on YouTube, type it and say, Father, I thank you that you're going to do me good tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody say amen. Tell your neighbor, 23rd October. I say 23rd October is women's conference. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we're excited for what God is going to do. It's going to be one of the greatest meetings we could have ever had before. Uh, it's 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're going to be with you. We're going to be ministering to you. That day you're going to be blessed more than ever before. Even the men are going to be blessed, although it's going to be a women's conference. I feel that even the men are going to be blessed that day. Somebody shout hallelujah. So encourage at least seven women, seven precious women, seven, for they are seven. Yeah, just get seven women and tell them I've booked you. If you have more faith for more than seven, then do it as well. Somebody shout hallelujah. But at least that's the least number you can tell that we have a conference on the 23rd of October. I believe that God is going to bless us that day. I'm already excited. I've seen that day. And all I can say is, brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, but especially ladies somebody shout hallelujah choir you may take your seats thank you very much uh for that um wonderful worship and praise we bless the lord always for you now i want you to take this time and send those links we're live right now on lighthouse television we are live on urban television we are live on facebook and we are live on youtube and on youtube you have the clearest picture that's high definition so just send the link right now and tell somebody, you know what? I feel you should tune in tonight. God is going to do you good tonight. Just send that. That's your way of um, mobilizing and reaching out for people to receive the message. It's true evangelism, especially in the time when the church is under lockdown. The best way is we, we can reach uh, our people is through sending them messages. And I believe many of you are now tune in because somebody referred this to you. So send it to another person and give them the opportunity to know God the way you did in Jesus' mighty name. And I know that the Lord will do you good. You will share in the blessing that I have in preaching the gospel to you today in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. I always read uh, the testimonies um, and I usually want to begin with spiritual growth and transformation. Yeah? Spiritual growth and transformation is one of the most important things uh, that every ministry should have as a testimony, you know. So I see a Pauline Kabubire, 20 years, she lived a laxed Christian life and did not take things seriously. 
and she had emotional insecurities, often sickly and constantly lived in fear. But when she tuned in in Fanero, her life has been transformed by the word. I, you don't know what that does when I hear that somebody has actually been transformed by the word of God. Give the Lord a mighty of praise. Somebody had a mother who was practicing witchcraft for many years and she kept praying for the salvation of the mother. And then she sent a prayer request in March this year. The mom called her testifying that she had received Jesus as her Lord and Savior. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have somebody from Kenya, Wanjiru, lack knowledge and understanding. I thank God for your life. Uh, she has gotten to know God. Lillian Wase was struggling spiritually and got stuck in many areas. Um, but when she got in contact with this ministry, awesome things. Namono Mariam had lost zeal. Now she loves the Lord. When somebody hears a message and they eventually now fall in love with the Bible, that's a very beautiful experience to have. Maureen Aloiso had a back issue for a year, was healed. Amanda had a grandmother with a back issue, was healed. Isaac experienced a very um, painful uh, leg. It was a fracture after an accident of two years, but the, the pain kept uh, there. And one of those days is tuning in and I speak to that leg and the leg was healed. In fact, I called out the name Isaac that day. So he says, Gloria had failed to conceive and she was diagnosed with infertility, blocked tubes and complications in her uterus. And the doctor told her, except by IVF, she would never conceive. So she listens to a sermon, particular sermons that stir her faith and she decided that she was going to live like a pregnant woman. Now, this is beautiful. She started acting, she says, and talking like a pregnant woman. And in November, as I was preaching, I gave a word of knowledge of a lady who had struggled with infertility issues and was to conceive that very week. And she, the power of God, she says, went through her. And the next month in December, she was declared pregnant. Hallelujah, glory to God. Somebody said hallelujah. Evelyn had a swelling on one of her body parts for five years. And one of those days she's listening to a sermon and I started to pray for people with swellings and she touched there and she just felt it disappear. That is God. People were healed of COVID rose, marriage restored, Maureen, missing person returned, bad dreams, healings of demonic affliction. Somebody called Leon had a hole in a tooth and uh, it was supposed to sort of be fixed by feeling yeah, and he had pain for two years. And one of those days when I was giving, I gave a word of teeth growing. And Leon says that he, his tooth, I mean, that hole started to fill until his tooth was no more. <laughs> God is amazing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God is amazing. Rashes healed, ETC, sinuses, jobs, 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 jobs. Divine providence, divine providence, divine providence, divine providence. Academic excellence, ETC, ETC. We thank God. Yours is next. Tell your neighbor, mine is next. And bigger than any man has ever had. Show get it. Say it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. We are going to give. We have platforms of giving. Flash them on the screens for our viewers, please. Uh, we, we give through our website, which is fanero.org slash give. But uh, we also give through our mobile application, which is downloadable on your Android or your Apple Store. That application has summons, it has devotionals, and everything is free. In this ministry, we give all things free because we were freely given. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, but also there's a giving section. And so you can give through that, or you can give through your MTN mobile money and your Airtel mobile money. Uh, either on the platform directly, or if you don't want to go through the mobile platform, but you have the MTN mobile money and the Airtel mobile money, you can actually give through the merchant codes that are also flashed on the screens for you. And the process of giving is clearly explained such that you don't miss out anything. And lastly, we bank with Equity Bank Uganda. The account name is Fanero Ministries International. And we have both the Ugandan shillings and the United States dollar account. You can also give through uh, those platforms. I want to thank God for you. I want to pray for you continuously again uh, for your continuous support and commitment uh, to further this message. And I can always tell you, truly, you give more every month. You give more every month. And we're doing all we can to see that the gospel 
is, is preached to the whole world through your giving. So, Father, I thank you for the most generous people who supply all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amaze them always. May their dreams come true. May things be so easy for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed and all saints said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, a story is given about a sower. A story is given about a sower. The Bible says, a sower went, to, uh, went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places, and they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no depth of the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Verses 8, but others fell into good ground, the Bible says, and brought forth fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. Some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Fold. I have promised to talk about the 30, the 60, and the 100 fold to understand it because many people read that portion of scripture, but not many actually have an answer. When we're talking about the 30 fold, what do we mean? When we're talking about the 60 fold, what do we mean? When we're talking about the 100 fold, what do we mean? We need to understand these things. Notwithstanding, I need to emphasize. The 30, the 60, and the 100 are in good ground. So we're not talking about the others which fell on the wayside or the others which fell on the stony uh, places or those which fell in thorny places. We're talking about those who have truly received the message. You see? And God is saying that even if, even if you are a good ground and you're a receiver of the word the way you are supposed to receive in this instance the, the the ground represents the heart even though you have a heart that has been taught or has adopted to the way of receiving and listening from God there are three dimensions from which you are able to receive or there are three dimensions from which the sons and daughters of men of God are placed in this whole pattern of receiving and that is what I want to help you uh, see and understand today but also allow me to help some of us who have had questions on what does the 30 fold mean what does the 60 fold mean what does the 70 fold mean and how is that applicable you know in my life today is the day in Jesus mighty name let me begin this way Matthew the 13th chapter that particular chapter has seven parables and those parables are parables concerning the kingdom of God. For those of you who are students of the word, if I had a master class or if I was teaching ministers, it would be something I would be so privileged to indulge myself into and really take us through why there are seven parables in that chapter and what each of those means and why God put them together. Because it's important. And if you're students of the word, I believe you're going to go back and study more and understand the way of the kingdom by understanding those seven parables of course the number seven representing perfection by understanding those seven parables you can get the full revelation of the way and the mind of God concerning the kingdom and how it works on the earth somebody shout hallelujah so in there are very deep things way deeper than some of us are able to interpret and so of course even though we're ministers of the gospel there are things that by reason of wisdom, we're not able to give everybody. Because for some, they're not able to take them now. And that is also not useful and wise to give what a man is not able to take. It's important to go where people are and be able to minister to them. And the majority of people uh, in the Christendom, in the body of Christ, are so behind in many things, unfortunately. But we believe, we believe that we get there in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. So of course, um, in, if you go down in the 35th verse to open your eyes a bit in the seriousness of this chapter, it says that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet saying, 
that I will open my mouth in parables and I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Right in there, right in there, in Matthew 13, many things reveal very deep secrets that were hidden before the ages. And these things are revealed to us who understand. In fact, this kind of chapter is the kind of chapter for those who have ears to hear. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's, it's the kind of chapter for those who have ears to hear. In other words, for those who have the ability to be able to chew it and get it in their spirit. So if you're weak and timid spiritually, it might be so hard for you to conceive such things. But we are at that place where we can understand these things. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has warned us always in scripture to take heed what we hear, Mark 4.24, and how we hear, Luke 8.18. In Mark 4, 24, he says, And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear, more shall be given. So take heed what you hear. The kind of message that you receive defines your measure and weight in the Spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. But he also warned us to take heed how we receive whatever is given to us by God. In Luke 8, 18, he says, Take heed therefore how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him more shall be given. And whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which seemeth, what, that which he seemeth to her. That's also another sermon on his own. To know what to hear and how to hear it. You see? So this sermon is one of those things that will help you understand why it's important to know what to hear and how to hear it. God has showed us that all this ground is good. It's the same ground. It's the same heart. You see, but it could receive a 30-fold of a message. It could receive a 60-fold of a message. It could receive a 100-fold of a message, de depending on where the man is and how trained and equipped you are to know how to receive. So tonight, as I help you do that, we hope and pray that you will get to that place where you'll receive a 100-fold in the name of Jesus Christ. For uh, Bible scholars also, let me also emphasize this, that when you read this gospel, these gospels, you realize that Jesus Christ is presented differently depending on the perspective from which the writers see him, okay? Yes, he is the person of God, but like Christ is a revelation personally to all of us. Matthew writes about Jesus from a certain perspective. Luke writes about Jesus from a certain perspective. Mark writes about Jesus from a certain perspective, as well as John. And when you look at, and, and when I was studying these uh, particular text from the book of Matthew, where we've read, you will realize that Matthew follows a certain order. He speaks of the a hundredfold first, and then he brings the sixtyfold first, and then he brings the thirtyfold first. Last, sorry. That is not a mistake. No. Matthew always depicted the Christ as a sovereign king. Huh? He's the king. He looks at him from a kingly perspective. And because it defines him from a kingly perspective, even the genealogy written of in the Gospel of Matthew points to him as one which comes from the lineage of David and the rest of them. You see? So from a kingly perspective, he cannot begin from a 30-fold because kings are not born uh, from 30-folds. Kings are not born from lower states right? Kings are born from higher state. And if it should happen, they can only go down, but they are not born down. They're born up. They're born with a certain glory. They're born with a certain influence. They're born into, you know, certain provisions that are not available for normal human beings, you see, because they're born into inheritance many a time. It's a rare thing to find a king born in a shark, you know, they're usually born in what? High places. They're born in, 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 in kingdoms. They're born in empires. You know, they're born in palaces. There's a system that favors them beyond the normal human being. And so when Matthew's writing, he cannot begin from the 34. He begins from the sovereignty and the place of success and glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you go in Mark, 
the fourth chapter, the 20th verse, Mark says, and these were they which were sown on good ground. He says, uh, such as the word, and he says, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Such as they which hear the word and receive it. And he says, and they bring forth some, listen, 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100 fold. You see, the order is changed. In, in, in Mark, the 30 fold comes first, the 60 fold comes second, the 100 fold comes last. Why? Because he depicts the Christ as a servant. He comes to serve men. And so from the order of servanthood, they begin from low estates as they're elevated to higher estates of life. They begin from the lowest status of society as they're elevated to the highest status of society. You see that? So he cannot introduce him from the realm of a hundredfold. When you go to Luke chapter 8, verse 8, he says, and the other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit of a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, let him that has ears hear what the Spirit is saying. And again, like I told you, this is a kind of sermon for those who have ears to hear. But you see, when Luke touched a hundredfold, he didn't touch anything else. He didn't speak about the 60-fold. He did not speak about the 30-fold. Why does Luke not talk about the 30 and the 60? Having had a perfect understanding of these things from the very beginning, as they were written and taught by the men of old, he had a perfect understanding. He studied the life of Christ and understood the patterns and where we truly are where we really should be. In fact, when Luke is defining the Christ, he defines him as human, but the perfect one. He defines Christ from humanity as a perspective, as a human being, but the perfect human being. So when he's defining the Christ as a perfect human being, he has no place of providing for a 30 or a 60 fold. But most importantly, if you read the book of Luke, as he's writing to Theophilus. Why does he write to Theophilus? He had a perfect understanding of these things from the very beginning as he all held the order of things. And then he chooses to write to Theophilus. From the first things to the second and third and fourth, he, he, he wrote to Theophilus from a patterned perspective of the gospel that Theophilus might have the certainty of the things in which he has been instructed. Because Luke has a deeper understanding and he's determined to reveal it to us through the true pattern of the Spirit. He does not compromise with a 60 and a 30 fold. Again, when we come to the New Testament, if you are born again and a new creation for you, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. Behold, the old is past and now the new. And he says, and all things are of God. All things are of God. You've been born into royalty. You're a royal priesthood peculiar people, your sons and daughters of the most high God, you're born in a kingdom, you are kings and priests to the most high God. What does that imply? You don't study this as a servant. Because if you study this as a servant, you will first get a 30 fold, a 60 fold, and then a 100 fold. You see, there'll be a process of getting to the best and whatever is perfect for you. You study it as a king. You study it as a daughter of a king, as a prince, as a princess. You study it as royalty. You study it as one with an inheritance. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so when we are talking about folds, what do we mean? 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. What do we mean? Now when you study the original language, whether Greek or Hebrew, when we define folds, we mean habitations. Habitations. And the, of course, it's a metaphorical in the sense, but it's habitations, it's places of dwellings. If, if I may simplify it a bit further for you, it's, a, it's places of dwellings. It's um, a hedged place. That means not just a place that you are accorded spiritually but it's also a hedge that you have no access to go out of it except by a certain principle or a certain way. You see, when you build a house and then you put a wall around it, you have a place where you can enter or exit your property. There's a gate there. There's a way that is created. 
So except by the revelation of some way, you cannot leave that place. When Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, the hages, the hages, wherever there are ways, somebody shout hallelujah. Now, with that understanding, it means that when the word comes to a good ground, the right heart, there are three places that that person will, in one of those three places, will you be placed according to how you received the word and what you received of the word. Am I making sense? So God spiritually has designated places for our habitation. You remember in Acts, how he speaks of the places, the boundaries of habitation. He has, he has called of all nations, one blood. He has, he has, has he made of all men to dwell on the face of the earth. And he has determined the times which are appointed and the boundaries of their habitation that they should seek after him. If happily they might feel after him and find him. You see? So we all have boundaries of habitation. We all have places that are given to us by God for us to be able to seek him and find him and relate with him. So all of us relate with God from a certain place. Are you following me? All of us relate with God from a certain place. Not all of us relate with God from the same place. That is why one man can pray for something and it doesn't come to pass. And another man can pray for it and it comes to pass. And another man simply speaks it and it comes to pass. Why? Because we're all relating with God from a different place. So where you are concerning every word written in scripture is important. And so these are the places that by the grace of God are going to help us understand. In Romans 12, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove that which is good, that which is acceptable, and the perfect will of God concerning your lives. Now you see how the folds are coming. So when you are, there are places that God regards as good concerning his will. And there are places that God regards as acceptable concerning his will. And there are places that God regards as perfect concerning his will. That's the 30, the 60, and the 100 fold. The things that belong in the habitation of the 30 fold are the things that concern whatever is good or whatever you will do or agree with and align yourself and God will say it's a good place that you are in as a Christian. But God you can have good, yet not acceptable. Still fall below the par. Still not meet the expectations. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's like saying, for example, when you become born again, you're going to heaven. Yeah, 100%. And then you live another 20 years broke, sick, beggarly, every bad thing is on your life, and then you go to heaven. We can gladly say, yeah, you're in a good place. Because you've, got, you, you've gone to heaven. It's a good thing that you received salvation. But it was not acceptable for you to live that life. Somebody shout hallelujah. It was not acceptable for you to live that, to live that life. And you can help yourself. Exercise yourself in faith. Do certain things and then certain results come in your life. And somebody can say, yeah, they lived an acceptable life in Christianity. In the faith. Why? Yeah, they got a job. They got a car. They had children. Yeah. At least they represented. It's acceptable. God can say, yeah, that's all right. At least you, you, I will not judge you. You know, I will not judge you like the guy who just lived poor and beggarly and weak without results in their lives. At least you had results that showed that, hmm, you know God, see? But then there are people who live their lives so perfectly. They discover who they are. They discover God's will concerning their lives. They discover their calling. They're positioned in the right places. They hear the voice of God so accurately and they run as men who are instructed. They don't beat the air, the Bible says, or chase things in uncertainty. They know where they're going. They know how to serve. They know what to do. The, the, you know, the, their print is clear. Their milestones are defined. They know where they are going. And God looks at this person and says, uh-huh, this one truly represented what it means to be born again. Somebody shout hallelujah. So these are places. Tell your neighbor, these are places. So let's go with the folds. What is the 30 fold? What is the 30 fold? 
Again, by interpretation, I'm going to use so much of biblical numerology. All right? The way the numbers in scripture are defined and what the deeper meaning of these numbers are. Again, if I had the opportunity to sit before, you know, people who are students, not only students, but let me say people who are ministers, people who are, who, who, who take the gospel seriously. It's one of also those sermons I would want to teach about understanding how, what numbers are according to uh, biblical narrative because it's a beautiful thing for you to know that God, our God, is a God of wisdom. And he has used numbers to reveal many, many, many great things. Many, many great things. And so numbers in the Bible are not coincidences. They are not coincidences. No. They are signs uh, of deeper orders and truths. Somebody shout hallelujah. But when it comes to the 34 now, it's a representation of the sufficient maturity the sufficient maturity, not the highest level of maturity. I'm talking about the sufficient maturity for one to be able, one, to dedicate themselves to God and his work, to dedicate themselves to God and his work. It's a symbol of readiness. That, that sufficient maturity is also a symbol of readiness in the spirit. See, God has placed all people who have a readiness of spirit in a certain place. Or at least, if your ground is good, if your heart is right, you have a readiness of spirit. You have the sufficient maturity of spirit for God to be able to work in you or to operate through you. And because of that, it's usually a place where we were first introduced to how to operate under the authority of God. So that's the realm of learning to cast out devils, learning to lay hands on the sick. Yeah, that's 30-fold, by the way. That's 30-fold. These signs shall follow all who believe. You know, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. They shall cast out devils in my name and they shall flee. They shall speak in other tongues. That is the realm of the 34. You understand? That is why in the book of Acts, you find people like um, Stephanos, Stephen. He can get into the marketplace and heal everybody until he catches the attention that everybody wants to stone him, those who are against the way of God. But when it gets to the church in Jerusalem, Stephen can't teach. He's not even allowed to stand on the pulpit to preach. Yet he's doing signs, miracles, and wonders. Now, consider the generation we're living in. A layman walks and the man becomes a prophet. Are you hearing me? <laughs> a blind eye sees and the man says, uh uh, now, eh? I'm an apostle. And then he starts what? Teaching. So, the realm of authority is to understand how the authorities of the Spirit work. Uh, but I'm talking about those which are in the general line of Christianity. At least every Christian should be able to cast out devils. Every Christian should be able to lay hands on the sick and they should be healed. Every Christian should have the, at least to handle a serpent and it shouldn't harm you. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. That touch deadly things and they shall not hurt you. That's 30 fold. That's 30 fold. It's a place where we attain a certain qualification to be able to, to serve God. It's basic, to serve God. If, if somebody is in the place of a 30-fold, that habitation is qualified enough to serve God. So it, it can be put in a place of leadership. It can be put in a place of control and authority over certain things. Because that's the realm of the 30-fold. Remember Jesus at the age of 30, he began ministry. He was ready. He was ready. So there's no coincidence that he began that ministry at the age of 30. Joseph stood before Pharaoh at the age of 30. What was he doing all those years in prison? God was preparing this man. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the 30-fold is a place of sufficient maturity to be able to be used of God. For the authority of God to operate in you. For the leadership of God to be appointed to you. To have the control over certain things. 
you can be given stewardship over some things. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because you have a readiness of heart. If a man is in the 34, they're a willing vessel. They're a willing vessel. So if somebody is still rebellious, no, 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 no. We're not talking. Again, like I said, this good ground is of people who already have at least learned to receive the word. Please don't compare these people who are still in the thorny places or stony ground eh, or, or hard surface. No, no, no. We're not talking about wayside. No, no, no. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. In Revelation, it talks about the church of Laodicea. You know, they're Laodiceans. Eh? They are neither hot nor cold. We're not talking about those kinds of people. And please allow me one day to share about the Laodicean church. Because some people are Laodicean, they just don't know how. It's how you treat the word of God. You know, for if you read about the church of Laodicea, they have this opinion that they are rich. They have this mindset that, ah, you know, I know everything. If, 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 if I don't know the word of God, why is it, why is it, why is it that I'm, I'm eating well or I'm sleeping well? I have a house, I have a car, I have this. So the, 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 he, they, he, he bears witness, the Spirit bears witness that they, they have this deception that they are rich, that they, are, they know what is being said. And, and the signs are clear. Have you been around somebody? You're in the middle of a sermon. You're in the middle of a sermon. And then they remember that they did not take the stock or the sock from one place to another. And that's the time they get up to go and pick it. Huh? That's the... When God is speaking, take it how you hear the word. If they were before the president of that nation, they can't even answer their phone. They don't, they're not even allowed to have that phone. But they're before the king of kings and the lord of lords. And then that's when they remember, oh, I forgot the sock in one bedroom. Let me get it from there and then put it in the middle of the sermon. You see somebody getting up, going to go and pick a sock. They're receiving life. They're being given life. And that is the time. The implication of that kind of person is that either they know enough that they will not miss anything by the time they go to the bedroom. Or... They're saying we've become so familiar with God that he would understand that it's important for us to pick a sock and take it to the other bedroom than hearing him speak. And that's the same person who will go to God and say, why is my business dying, Lord? I have tithed. Is it about the tithe? Thank you that you're honorable in giving him his tithe. But how do you respond to his word when he's speaking to you? One man said that I desired your word more than necessary food. One man desired the word of God more than necessary food. More than necessary food. And then you see an individual in the time when the service begins, that's when they need to go and pick crisps in the middle of the sermon. Jesus is saying, and then they first wake, then they run to the, you understand? They go into the pantry, they look for crisps, they look for cake, you understand? In the middle of the sermon. Are you hearing me? And then they come back after five or two, three minutes because they realize, oh, before I even get this cake, I think I'll also need a cup of tea that follows the cake. You understand? And then they go back and make the cup of tea 10, 15 minutes. The someone is, yeah, I'm hearing. You understand? And then they come back and then they sit down with their cake. Uh-huh. This guy can preach. You understand? Man says, I've esteemed your words the words of your mouth, more than necessary food. That means he got to a point that if God was speaking, he would not even think about food. He would not even think about food, not even for one moment. For what? This is food. Somebody shout amen. amen. Learn to be a good student of the word. Learn to give a certain respect to the word of God. You'll be amazed where it takes you. Listen, people of other religions know it. A Muslim can't be in the middle of Salah. Eh? And they are, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah. He can't be in the middle of that. And then he thinks, ha, ah, I left my pizza in the car. A Muslim can't think it. Because they're not allowed to even think that way. You see? 
Buddhist, Hinduist, Confucianism, Taoism, see how they worship. But come to the Christian faith and see what's happening in the church. Listen, worship has an order. Worship has an order. I don't even know whether I should say more than, because I feel a lot to say, but I'm not allowed because of the time. Worship has a way of order. Did you know that there's a way God responds? Do you know that the things we do spiritually create a certain sound in the spirit? Did you know that? In fact, when you read the literal Hebrew, God sang the earth in two form. So when you hear, let there be, there's a certain acoustic, there's a certain symphony, there's a certain sound that comes out and commands the creation of these things. And our ministry must become a sound God. There it may be many voices, but there's none without signification. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, the Bible says he sounds out the bottomless things of God. That's why God loves hymns and songs and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. When a man is full of the Holy Spirit, a certain sound as of a form of a worship comes out of their spirit. Everything you do, everything you do is a sound to God. It's a sound of God. So to worship God is more than just those two, three, 15 minutes of praising him. No, to worship God is a manner of life in how you respond to his word. That's what it means. That's what it means. That's what it means. But, but there's, there's more I could say. I'm not able to say now, but one day I hope and pray that God will, be, will, will give me the grace to be able to share that. But back to the 34th. It's a place that qualifies you because you have enough sufficiency for God to work through you. So do not be um, deceived that that's the best of God. That is why there are men who healed in his name and he says, I don't know you. They cast out devils in his name and he says, I do not know you. But hasn't the Bible spoken? He can only know us as we've known of him. as we've known of him. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know you as a person. This knowing I'm talking about is a place of relationship. Draw near and he shall draw near to you. It doesn't mean he's not there. No, he's present to you. But he's waiting for that place where you're not going to be controlled and manipulated into relating with him to simply open up a place of just out of love in your heart from the revelation of him that you will learn to just have time with him, fellowship with him. To just be with God. Get moments where you just want to be alone with God. Some people just want to be alone with television. Leave me television and just go. You just go. Just put television for me and go. Make sure you've paid my subscriptions. I'll be okay. No, I'm going out for a week. Oh no, yeah, it's okay. Just put internet in the house and let it run. Me, you'll not hear me say anything. Just, you understand? Some people want to be alone with television. Some want to be alone with the internet. Some want to be alone with Facebook. Alone with WhatsApp. But when you're a Christian, you learn to be alone with God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Every believer who has a successful life, Christian life, has a solitude experience with God. You have that one moment with God. Mostly, at least once or twice a day. Do you know, the Bible speaks of Daniel. He prayed how many times a day? Three times, isn't it? Three times he used to be in the presence of God. I was reading the psalmist one day and I discovered that the psalmist prayed seven times a day. Muslims pray five times. Christians, when they are getting to the place of, of evening, Father, I thank you. We go. <laughs> then you wake up. Baba. <gasps> oh my God. You understand? You're struggling to even sustain one moment. So I'm not saying that you don't have schedules. You could have busy schedules. But at least remember, even if you're a working person, I used to work in the bank, but the ministry was growing very effectively. 
We raised, we grew to 2,000 members while I was still banking, doing an 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., sometimes 7, 8, 9 p.m. job. But we were growing. Why? Because I knew how to maximize my time with God. Live a life of constant fellowship. Yeah, you get five minutes, just speak in tongues for five minutes, even if there are two minutes. And then if you get another opportunity for another two, speak. Yeah, just, just keep a life of an at, a certain atmosphere. You'll see that your life will start to blossom. It will appear so beautiful. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say amen. Now, the 60 fold is a place of rest. It's a place of learning to lean upon, to be supported by and upheld by God totally. It's a place of seizing from your works and the clear vision of knowing or learning how to entirely give yourself over to God. Why is that place beautiful? Because it's a place where you learn to be fully led by the Holy Spirit. It's one thing for a man to live in the miracles and signs and wonders of their day, but not be able to find rest in God. Some people are functioning and serving God, but they are not rested. The Bible says, we which have believed have found rest or have rested. You see, the Bible doesn't say, we which are believing do find rest. No. He says, we which have believed shall enter into rest. We enter, or we have entered, sorry, into rest. We which have believed. He's not talking about believing and believing God for healing. No. I have believed God that I'm healed. That's a rested man. That's 60-fold. I have believed God that from today, from the sermon that I've had, I will never be poor again. That's a place of rest. And you'll never bring up that conversation. What if one time it comes back? It will never be of consequence. You'll never even mention it because at that place when you settled it in your heart that you'll never be poor, you actually meant it. That's 60-fold. So, 30-fold is believing. 60-fold is believed. It's a place of rest. It's a man or woman who can have fire in the house and go to bed knowing very well that he won't burn. He won't burn. He won't consume anything. He won't take anything from him. It's a man who can walk to the hospital and get the worst result and walk out knowing that it can't kill them and they go do their own businesses because they have believed. When you start to understand this place, that's when you realize that not many Christians are there. Hmm? How many Christians in the world need a certain injection for them to believe that they're going to get better? How many Christians in the world need a certain tablet in their mouth for them to believe that they're going to get better? You see, it's a dangerous place because you might want to throw yourself there when God hasn't taken you there by revelation and then you refuse to swallow your medicine and die. If you die, it's your fault, it's not mine. I take some people to hospital myself. And there's nothing wrong with you taking drugs until you get to a point where you're healed. You understand? Because you could die while you're still believing. And then it's, it's your fault. No, I tell people, take your medicines, but keep believing. One day you will wake up, if you're determined, one day you will wake up and turn it. But before you do, so you see, when you're talking about these faults, they're in different areas of our lives. There's a person who financially is in a hundredfold, but health-wise, they are even below 30. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's important to understand that. You see, it's not one size fits all. There are people who are hundredfold in marriage, but in ministry, they're still there. 30-fold, perhaps, or even below 30. There's no fold. The message is falling on stony ground. The message is falling on stony ground. Oh, wayside. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you learning something? So 60-fold is a realm of rest. It's a realm of understanding what it means to be upheld. And the Bible says that my hand was held by the Almighty. It was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. To be supported entirely by God. 
to lean your entire, it's a place of faith, but deep faith. It's that faith that has seen the end. And when it sees the end, it finds rest. It finds rest. No man in the 60-fold can be made anxious. So the Bible says, be anxious. Do not be anxious of anything. It's not talking about, to, it's not talking about men in the 60-fold. It's talking about people in the 30-fold or below. The Bible says, do not be anxious. Be careful for nothing. He's talking to people below the 60-fold. Men in the 60-fold do not care about anything. They're not anxious about anything. They don't lose peace because the money has refused to come. Because they know how it comes and how it will come. They know that this will turn to good. That place, can you can look stupid to people who observe you. Because they'll be like, but why don't you care about yourself? Don't you see that you're running out of time? Don't you see that you're dying? Don't you see that you're this? When you are in the 60-fold and you know the result, you don't worry. But like all counterfeit, in all of these folds, appears counterfeits. Somebody can appear like they're in the 60-fold, but they're dying. And they will die. And then somebody says, but she believed. The Bible says nothing is impossible to whoever believes. So if she believed, so why did she die? No, she was acting. He was acting a play. The movie ended and unfortunately they died. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say 60-fold in Jesus' mighty name. So then we get to the 100-fold. You'd think they would say 30 plus 60 plus that, another 30 which should go into the 90-fold. Uh-uh. From the 60-fold, we go to 100-fold. And the 100-fold represents a place of perfection. It represents a place of fulfillment. It represents a place of understanding the perfect will of God. It represents the place of the elect, not the called, not the gifted, but the elect. For many are called, but few are chosen. That's the hundredfold. If you're talking about the calling of God, huh? the calling of God, the giftings of God, which are without repentance, those are in the 30s and 60s. When a man is consecrated and elect, when the man is chosen a certain way, that man is taken into the hundredfold. But again, the elections have dimensions. You see? The elections have dimensions. We are a chosen generation. Granted. But are all in the chosen generation chosen by God for specific tasks? No. It's within the chosen generation that he has said that you, many are called, but few are chosen. You understand that? Why are you a chosen generation? Because you're different from anyone else who does not have a relationship with God. So in that regard, you are chosen by God. You see, that's a dimension, it's a place to. There's a perfection that you have obtained by reason of being among the Lord's chosen. You agree? But within us who are chosen from the world, separated from the world also, many are called, he has said, but few are chosen. So for you, the believer, this is a deeper place. The responsibility of a man or woman chosen of God is different from a man just responding from a calling or a gift. But we're still living in a generation of people who can't tell the difference because they can look at a gift and think that this person is chosen. Yes, gifts follow. But after Jesus Christ, many men have healed the sick. But not all who have healed the sick, much as were called, are chosen by God. if all believers are supposed to heal the sick anyway. Are you following what I'm saying? The hundredfold is where God wants you to be. It's beyond even the place of rest. <laughs> it's beyond the place of entirely leaning and trusting and allowing him to uphold you. It's beyond that place. No, it's a place of taking responsibility of whoever has upheld you, God, and whatever he has done through you. It's a place of responsibility. You could have enough faith never to lack another day. 
But if you are able to teach another man how not to lack, you're here because you've taken responsibility. You are blessed to be a blessing. People who are in their hundredfold live a life of giving because they understand how much they've been given. They live a life of blessing because they understand how much they have been blessed. Not all in the 60-fold are givers. And you can never give enough in the 60-fold. You can never give enough in the 60-fold because it's still selfish here. You're learning to be upheld, to be supported, to lean on. It's you. It's a personal thing. But when you learn to live beyond yourself, then you're going into the hundredfold. When Paul is in his last years of ministry, he says, I'm like a cup huh, that is running over. I've finished the course. And now I'm being poured out as an offering. I'm being poured out as an offering. That means the thing on me is multiplying now through the lives of many. That's a man in their hundredfold. The 60 and 30 can't multiply through another man. When you're in the hundredfold, you easily multiply through other people. The thing operating on your life can be extended to influence another man to work in the same realms as you. They can easily walk the journey of the 30 and 60 as they observe you. You understand what I'm saying? The, when, you, when, you, when you look at Abraham, look at Abraham, let me give you a simple, simple example. God had a plan with Abraham, but it could not be fulfilled perfectly without a seed the preservation of that posterity. And at what age did Abraham have a child? If you read out the Bible, he was 100 years old. The fulfillment of God's purposes. He was 100 years old when Isaac was born. The Bible says in Genesis 21 verses 5, when Isaac was born, Abraham was 100 years old. But don't you remember that it's in Isaac that the seed of Abraham is called. That means it has no definition and identity in being called until it gets into Isaac. It's in Isaac that the seed of Abraham is called, that they find purpose, so it means. In fact, Abraham knew it. I have no seed, I have no heir. A slave is going to take over this thing. And a slave mentality cannot carry such a glory of the patriarch. Uh-uh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shem had his first child after the flood when he was 100 years old. There's a reason. It's no mistake that these numbers are in there. But it's that generation of Shem that is giving birth to the right lineage and picture of God in how he wants the world to go, a perfect world. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what I'm trying to tell us here, when you get into the place of 100 fold, you understand the fulfillment of things. You're not believing for the fulfillment. You're not questioning the fulfillment. You understand the fulfillment of things. You're the kind of man and old woman whose life is evidenced by the fulfillment of God's promises from the first to the last. And it is possible to live that life. It is possible for somebody to be observed. And when they look at you, literally every promise God has made is on your life. That's a hundredfold. If he promised that you shall be healthy, you are 100% healthy. If he promised that you shall be wealthy, you are 100% wealthy. Your children, you know, shall grow up as cedars. They are for signs and wonders. They are potents. They are taught of God and their, their peace is many. You're raising the perfect husband. You, you know, sorry, you're raising the perfect children. You, 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 you're, you're raising the perfect family. You are living the perfect financial life. You have the perfect ministry. You are in divine health 100%. Is it possible to be perfect? Yes, sir. Scripture it is possible. That's the hundredfold. But you have people who are even preaching doctrines such as you can never be perfect. What do you mean? You can never be perfect. So why, is our, why are we laboring? Like the Bible says in Colossians, we labor that all men might what? Be perfect. A hundredfold is full maturity. So the thirtyfold is sufficient maturity. Sufficient. They have just enough to go by. The 60-fold is established maturity. They're established. The 100-fold is perfect 
maturity. They're beyond just being established. They, they cannot be shaken anymore. They cannot go back to a certain place anymore because God has dealt with them a certain way. These are habitations. They're places where we are. And it's possible for you, 360 degrees of your life, to be a hundredfold, to have a hundredfold in every aspect of your life. It's possible for people to look at you and there is nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing missing. You're a good husband, you're a good wife, perfect children, finances are good, ministry is going upward, your education is up there, your head is functioning, the influence on your life is not questioned, you are deep, you are wise. Everything on you, when a man is in a hundredfold, everything they do prospers. Everything that they touch prospers. Everything that they give themselves to, they can do well, so well, excellently. It's possible. It's possible. God has given it to us. It's available. Somebody shout hallelujah. But you see, you cannot get into the place of perfection when you have not learned <laughs> to lean entirely, to apply yourself to God to submit to his word and power to uphold you. This place of 60-fold is the revelation, the full revelation of grace. You understand? Because it's, you've seen people who make lame men walk, but they're still under the law. You understand? They're still preaching the letter, but the miracles are working with them. They're cursing out devils. They have money, they have, but they're still here. The message, why we preach the grace, is it's the beginning of somebody truly understanding 60-fold. Somebody receiving the plate, somebody learning to rest in God. If you're still debating his righteousness imputed through faith or not, should we continue to sin so grace should abound? You're either here or beyond, below. But when you get from that place and come here and you're entirely leaned on Christ, and you understand grace holistically. This, this is a man understanding the message of grace. They find rest. They know that I can never do it on my own strength. Now, let me give you a little example of a guy who goes in a meeting in an overnight, prays for the sick, and the sick are healed. And then the next day, he calls, he's called in another healing meeting, and the sick are healed. And the third time, he's called in another meeting, and the sick are not healed. And the fourth time, they're healed. And the fifth, they're not healed. And the sixth, they're not healed. The seventh, they're healed. And then he defines a uh, doctrine there and says, you know, sometimes God moves, sometimes he doesn't move. No, that's your doctrine based on your experiences. Even when you say, ah, but Jesus went among his own and he could not do many mighty deeds and saints. Yes, the Bible says he could not do many mighty deeds and saints, but, but he did some mighty, some, some deeds. He did some miracles, except the Bible says in Mark 6, 5, save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them. Yes, even in the place of sheer rejection, there were still some results. So you give no excuse of healing. Oh, at least, okay, let's just say, yeah, it was a funny day, what? But at least there's a result that came out. But the people say, ah, you know, sometimes you can go and God will not heal anyone. Oh! I see where he's speaking from. He's down there in the 30. And I observe and I say, hmm, poor thing. He doesn't know that all things in Christ are here yeah, and amen to the glory of the Father. Yes, there are events where you might not see a certain realm and dimension of healing. But every time you pray for the sick, you should see healing. <laughs> Even in those who don't believe most, at least you'll heal a flu. At least you'll heal a headache. But you will heal. Are you hearing me? Because it's not your ability. It is the working of God. When you understand the 60-fold, every time you lay hands on the sick, you'll see the hand of Christ healing. When you're still in the 30, you might think you're the one. When you get into the 60, you'll see the hand of God. You'll see it extend to heal. You'll see the rest of you just allowing him to heal. When you get in the 100, you'll enter a room and they will heal. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. You will look at a person and the power of God will change their lives. Your countenance will be enough to minister to men. But all of these are places. 
and you can identify them as you look and study your life, my finances, where am I at? My health, where am I at? My ministry, where am I at? My marriage, where am I at? My education, where am I at? When you study those things and understand, if there are areas in the third, you push them here. You start moving these things as you excel and getting to the next level. You'll start to see your life evidently changed. And the people that observe you will say, there's something about this man or woman that is different. It's the folds. Tell your neighbor it's the folds. So you can choose. You can choose. Have I made sense? Yes, sir. Raise your voice and let's speak to God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We receive your word tonight in the name of Jesus. That you will move us. And as Luke says, we only believe for a hundredfold because that's the pattern of perfection. And that's what we receive tonight. I pray for those of you who are sick, that you're healed. Those of you who are struggling in any way, in your marriages, in your ministries, in your dreams, in your education, in your aspirations, that things are changing for your good in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. It's done. It's done. It's done. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to just speak these words. Speak these words. Just speak them. Don't ask how. Just, just speak them. Because that's, that's a willingness. That's a willing spirit. Say, Father, I thank you for the gift of Jesus. Tonight, I met the choice to receive him in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. If you made that prayer, go on fanero.org slash salvation and send your story. I want to help you know what it means to be born again. I'll send you some information to help you understand salvation. We'll put you on a wall, a WhatsApp wall or whichever platform it is to help you grow in the faith. And if you have a local church, go and pray there. Or call us on plus 256 200 If you also have testimonies, send your testimonies through fanero.org slash testimonies or call us on plus 256 200 999405. You can also send in your prayer requests for those of you who have a need of prayer. You might not find me on phone or email. Just send those uh, requests on either fanero.org slash prayer or you can also send them on the mobile application. If you update it in the About Us section, you'll find a place where you can uh, submit your prayer requests. I read and I pray for you always in Jesus' mighty name. I hope to see you, hear from you, connect with you um, on Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout hallelujah. Kings shall come to my rising. For I am favored and great. In all I do, I shall prosper. Oh, everything I touch, touch This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app. Available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at finero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finero, make manners.